Good morning. A warm welcome on this spring day to all of you joining us, faculty, staff, distinguished guests, family and friends, and most of all, the class of 2021. I am Ray Rice, and I have the honor of serving as the President and Provost of the University of Maine at Presque Isle. I'm here to welcome you to an occasion we never anticipated we'd be repeating, UMPI's second ever virtual commencement. Members of our class of 2021, you are an extraordinary class that has persevered through one of the toughest academic years imaginable, and we couldn't be more proud of you. In celebrating the class of 2021, we also recognize the many exceptional individuals who helped make today possible for these graduates, the faculty and staff, the family and friends, all of you who have helped these individuals succeed in so many ways, large and small, during their undergraduate experience and during this most unusual last year and a half of their college careers. We'd like to begin today's event with our traditional beginning to each and every commencement, we ask you all from your homes or wherever you're watching to please stand for the singing of our national anthem by UMPI professional advisor and UMPI alum, class of 2014, Bethany Lord. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proud we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly Dreaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled? Thank you so very much, Bethany. For two years now, we have had to celebrate our commencement, and this year is the University of Maine at Presque Isle's 112th commencement, not in Wadeen Gymnasium, where we had faithfully held them since its opening in 1960, but through distance technology, as you are seeing me now. For the past 15 months, we have been impacted by a global, medical, economic, and social crisis on a scale never experienced in our lifetimes, one which has all too often exacerbated the inequities between nations and individuals, between those who have the means and wherewithal to insulate themselves against loss and oppression and those who do not. It has forced us to reconceive not just our routines and our daily behavior, but also compelled us to reassess the integrity and credibility of our institutions and their leaders, to find moral, ideological, and spiritual sustenance from family and friends inspiration from figures past and present, often in ways unexpected or unimagined, and all too often in circumstances in which we feel those who should be serving the greater good, protecting the common weal, pro providing that ethical and inclusive leadership, have failed to do so. You, the class of 2021, have witnessed not only great loss of life and disruption on a global scale, but have all too often seen what many considered to be nearly unimaginable assaults upon the cornerstones of freedom and democracy in this nation, in a sense culminating in the shameful events of January 6th, which challenged the peaceful succession of power following a legitimate and lawful presidential election process. Through all of this, you have demonstrated not only a remarkable resilience and tenacity, but also an absolutely essential willingness to serve as role models, not for just one another, but for our broader communities and for our nation, in the sense of your inclusivity, your compassion, 
in your sense of justice, and perhaps what is needed now more than ever, your leadership. And that leadership doesn't come merely at dramatic or powerful moments. It is found in seemingly small, individual, and often private acts of conscience and integrity. As Martin Luther King Jr. is, re is reported to have stated, if I cannot do great things, I can do small things in a great way. Indeed, as we have far too frequently and recently experienced, it is not in the grandiose actions of those whom we may have expected to embody and practice and promulgate inclusivity and equity that we find these authentic acts of conscience and kindness, but rather it is in the everyday activities that you each have practiced over these past four years and particularly these past 15 months. It is in your decisions to engage in crucial conversations with family and friends, to participate in BLM and other social justice rallies in Presque Isle, in Maine, and far beyond, to get involved with local organizations and institutions to provide support to those who need comfort and assistance, to engage in civil dialogue with those who may, who may feel differently than you, to practice acts of kindness that make the world a better place today and serve as the foundation of a better tomorrow. And that is perhaps because you know the answer to those questions we have all been asking these many months. When can we return to normal? You know that the answer is, as, as Sonia Renee Taylor, a humanitarian social justice activist and educator and winner of the 2004 U.S. National Individual Poetry Slam competition, has stated that normal never was, or certainly normal was never a place of justice, equity, and acceptance for all of us equally. Rather, it was far too often, for far too many, a world of disconnection, confusion, rage, and scarcity. The pandemic has underscored that fact, and it is toward your compassion, your understanding, and your leadership that we all look toward as stitching a new garment that truly fits all of humanity and nature. To this end, I think of those acts of kindness and leadership practiced by so many members of this graduating class. We will be fortunate to hear in a few minutes from Deborah Klain, who serves as your student commencement speaker and whose words speak so eloquently in this regard. I also think of Paul Kaplan, who graduates today and begins his career in physical education and who reminds us of the importance of grit and tenacity of digging in and making this moment the best time in your lives, no matter your calendar age, to create and pursue opportunities. And of Megan Cole, a transfer student from a great sister school to the north who finished her degree while working full time at WAGM and who persisted through great personal loss supported by her family and from those at our university, such as Dr. J, whose reassuring words helped her to completion. And Inez Ngoga, recipient of this year's Heart and Soul Award from Campus Compact, bestowed annually to a student within the state of Maine's university and colleges whose work helps to engender stronger communities on their campuses and beyond through civic engagement, a fact embodied not only by her leadership of the Black Student Union these past two years, and through organizing multiple events, such as the Black Slam, a poetry slam in honor of Black History Month this past February, but to her work as a main policy scholar on Title IX programming and the need for greater support for students across the University of Maine system. Each of these classmates are but four very different examples of the type of remarkable and compassionate leadership you embody in this class of 2021. You have my humble thanks as president of this university not just for the transformative change you have made possible for this campus, for your peers, for your friends and family, but for the hope that you provide for each and every one of us. Although we cannot gather together for this year's commencement event, we are fortunate to have many distinguished speakers who are able to join us virtually. You'll be hearing from the following individuals. The University of Maine System Chancellor, Dan O'Malloy. The University of Maine Board of Trustees, Chair James Irwin. Steve Richard, the chair of UMPI's Board of Visitors. Stacy Emery, the chair of the Faculty Assembly. This year's commencement speaker and honorary degree recipient, Chris Duty, CEO of Cary Medical Center and Pines Health Services. Last year's honorary degree recipient, Larry Shaw, president and CEO of MMG Insurance. Deborah McCallum Klain, the class of 2021 student commencement speaker. Craig Cormier, president of UMPI's Alumni Association. 
So let us begin with greetings from Chancellor Malloy. To the graduates, congratulations, and thank you for inviting me to be part of your celebration. I want to first thank also the staff and faculty of your institution and your great president, Raymond Rice, for the contributions that they have made to your success. I take this moment to also remind you that your success has been ensured by family members and members of your community and the broader population of Maine. I charge you with going forward and using your degree to the best of your abilities for not only your good, but for the good of the greater community. Find ways to continue to contribute to that community wherever you live and remember us back in Maine uh, as we think so highly of you and congratulate you on your success. Greetings to you all from the University of Maine System Board of Trustees. I'm Jim Irwin, Chair of the Board. Once again, we find our university's most important events compromised by a viral pandemic. For those of you who may have endured the disease or have family members who did, please accept our sympathies and wishes for a return to good health. While this pandemic is not quite ready to let go, to succumb to the laws of epidemiology, neither are we succumbing to the pandemic, not by a long shot. Instead, we gather by virtual means to do what it is so important for us to do, to take the time to celebrate the achievements of our 4,000 degree recipients across all our campuses. At this time last year, even as we celebrated with amazement the ability of students, faculty, and staff to turn on a dime from in-person to 100% remote learning in a matter of days, and to press ahead to finish the year's work, we looked back and said, what just hit us? At that point, it would have been easy to get discouraged, to step back, to hold out for the experience you thought you had signed up for. And yet, a remarkable 87% of our students continued from fall to spring, compared to 75% a year earlier when there was no pandemic. The board is so very impressed by and proud of the individual decisions and commitments this number reflects. Once again, students, families, faculty, and staff have shown their main bona fides pulling together with tremendous resilience, adaptability, patience, cooperation, and persistence. So this year, even as we remark with astonishment on the emergence in real time of a very different higher ed experience, many of the attributes of which will stay with us long after COVID departs from center stage, we look back and think, what a long, strange trip it's been. But commencement, of course, is also a time to look forward. So let me take a moment to do that. First, remember as you carry this experience with you that pandemics like this one are very uncommon. They're like 100-year floods. We don't really engineer our institutions to withstand them, and we have to adapt on the fly. I hope you will draw from your triumph over this level of adversity an extra measure of confidence in the next phases of your lives. Second, many of you have spent the last four or so years acquiring the skills and knowledge needed for a specific vocation. But some of you have not. You've entered college not knowing you needed to explore, to experiment. Maybe you know now, maybe you're not there yet. But whatever your path, the one acquisition that should be common to you all should be the ability to think critically and for yourself. We're bombarded regularly from every direction with carefully packaged messages purporting to distill the complexities of our society and even human nature itself into conveniently simple memes. These memes get repeated enough to become accepted as fact. Often they are anything but. For example, when you hear follow the science, stop and question. Science is a process of inquiry, not a magical incantation that confers legitimacy on a theory or a contention. Ask, what is the science underlying the command to follow it? And when you hear, do the math, well, that's generally a good idea, but try to make sure it's the right math. Your world is going to be awash in data and data analyses, and they will not all be trustworthy. Try to understand what's behind them, 
Try to satisfy yourself that it's the right math. Critical thinking, whether it's following the science, doing the math, or some other form of due diligence, will rarely provide certitude. Often, however, it can lead you to an understanding of probabilities that help you make good decisions. If your university experience has given you the ability and the inclination to approach important decisions with that kind of thinking, then we did our job. I want to conclude by looking ahead for our system as well. The pandemic caused us to make sudden and extensive modifications to how we operate at great cost so that you and your fellow students, faculty, and staff would be able to continue your education safely and largely uninterrupted. At the same time, we've tried very hard to keep our eyes on and over the horizon. We have many challenges, and we are applying our best critical thinking skills to identify the best strategies to overcome those challenges so that improving student success through better accessibility, affordability, relevance, and efficiency can be our everyday focus. But in addition to these challenges, we have many opportunities as well. A new engineering facility at the University of Maine nearing completion. Construction about to begin on a student success center and the first residence halls for the University of Southern Maine's Portland campus. A new accreditation model that fosters collaboration across the system to make all of our programs widely accessible and to improve academic efficiency. And an unprecedented gift from the Harold Alfon Foundation that includes creation of a system-wide college of engineering, computing, and information science, funding for three system-wide initiatives to improve student success, and the completion of the University of Maine Graduate and Professional Center and related plans for investment in our law school. I'm proud to say that despite the disruption, we have persevered together. So once again, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, congratulations for staying the course in a time of unprecedented challenge and change, and best wishes for what lies ahead. On behalf of the Board of Visitors, I would like to congratulate you on your graduation day. Like you, I had the distinct pleasure of graduating from the university back in the early 70s, and I watched two of my daughters also graduate from UNPI. I know that you will put your education to good use no matter which community that you live in. You will make this university proud. I hope that you will get involved with the community, that you will become that Little League baseball coach or volunteer at a soup kitchen, or maybe become a school board member or an elected official. Communities need people like you to make a difference. I've always believed in the power of one, that one person can make a difference in somebody's life. Be that person. Again, congratulations, and I hope you have a great day. Before we hear remarks from Stacy Emery on behalf of the faculty of the University of Maine at Presque Isle, we want to take a moment to honor and remember three faculty and staff members we lost this past year. They provided so much support, both in and outside the classroom, to our students. First, John Haley. He was an English instructor and director of university experience. He will long be remembered for his kindness and the genuine interest he took in every person he met. He taught at UMPI for 15 years and passed away on September 10th, 2020. Second, Patrick Baker. He served as UMPI's head athletic trainer and was an UMPI graduate, the class of 2008. Patrick was a person so many turned to for support and advice, and his ability to make people laugh will be long remembered. He passed away on October 25, 2020. And third, Alan Salo. Dr. Salo was an associate professor of psychology and part of the AFM leadership team on campus for many years. He so enjoyed teaching students and took pleasure in seeing them succeed. He taught at UMPI for 21 years and passed away on November 20th, 2020. Their passing has been an incredible loss to our university, but we are so grateful to each of them for the work and the many lives they touched during their time with us. Please join me in a moment of silence to remember them. Thank you, everyone. Now let's hear from Stacy Emery. 
Hello, I'm Stacy Emery, Chair of Faculty Assembly, Professor of Business and Accounting. Thank you, President Rice, for that incredibly fitting tribute to John, Patrick, and Alan. Now, on to our graduating seniors. From your entire faculty at the University of Maine at Presque Isle, congratulations, class of 2021. Today is a day you're going to remember for and cherish the rest of your lives. The day you've worked so hard to get to, and now you have arrived. This day is yours, this accomplishment is yours, and the future is yours. Eleanor Roosevelt once said, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. We know you believed in the beauty of your dreams because you're here today. We're so excited for what your future endeavors hold. Today, as you celebrate all of your hard work that's brought you before us, we'd like to help you dream even bigger dreams because the future belongs to you. Close your eyes for a moment and imagine yourself standing on the side of Mount Katahdin. Your feet are secure on the lookout point. The beautiful sunshine is filling your soul with warmth and joy. The view is just so incredible. It just takes your breath away. You worked so hard to get to this majestic lookout point, and you have sweat on your brow as proof of all of your hard work. The ascent to this point wasn't easy, but you have made it. Open your eyes now. Class of 2021, today is your lookout point. Enjoy it, savor it, celebrate it. Your hard work, grit, sweat, and sometimes even tears have brought you here. You have earned it. This moment is yours. The future is yours. As you celebrate the wonders of today, your faculty at UMPI wants you to celebrate what is ahead. Here you are at this milestone lookout point in your life, taking in the beauty of all you've accomplished. You should feel accomplished and energized, able to take on the rest of the ascent up your mountain. There are going to be difficult parts in your journey the paths may not be clear or the train may be rocky, but you will persevere as you continue moving forward. When the path is so steep and it feels impossible to ascend, stop, take a breath, and imagine those lookout points that are ahead. As you continue your climb, the views will only get better and better. Remember though, you cannot stop moving forward. Believe in yourself, class of 2021. Take that next step. The future is yours. At this time, I have the honor to introduce our 2021 commencement speaker, Chris Duty, CEO of Cary Medical Center and Pines Health Services. For more than three decades, Ms. Duty has been an outstanding advocate in the realms of healthcare and service to the community. Through her efforts at the local, state, and national level, she has been a powerful ambassador for Northern Maine and an inspiration for the next generation of leaders working toward their goals and dreams. Chairman Irwin, Chancellor Malloy, President Rice, trustees, distinguished guests, graduates, families, and friends. I am truly honored to speak before you today on this very special occasion. Commencement ceremonies symbolize one of the greatest rituals. Why do we mark today? We celebrate because you've worked hard and spent countless hours on your education. It feels like yesterday that my dad and mom drove me to the University of Maine at Presque Isle to start my nursing education. How time has flown by because it was 40 years ago the fall of 1981 that I moved into 304 Park Hall to begin a journey that started with my education right here at the University of Maine at Presque Isle. 
Today, we celebrate you, your family, your parents, and your children who have lived the many sacrifices with you during your education. We celebrate you because you are our future. Tomorrow is Mother's Day, and next month is Father's Day. For all the dads and moms graduating today, congratulations, enjoy your family. Today symbolizes that you did it. You've committed many hours and have succeeded. Success should be part of your professional goals as you enter your career. Career means being part of progress. You have curiosity about knowledge and knowledge will help you progress in your career. In life, there is a wealth of opportunity. Make a point on taking on several opportunities as you may reveal a talent you have that could lead to success. Success means taking risks. You took a risk when you entered this educational endeavor, enrolled at the University of Maine at Presque Isle, and now completed your degree. Your education is your ticket to success, and your degree is yours to keep forever. Now that you have completed your education, will be accepting your degrees and begin your career, I ask you never to forget who you are, where you are from, and the importance of family, friends, and role models. When I think to the core values that assisted in my professional growth and the success of my career, I think of my parents, Lee and Arlene Duty. Both my dad and mom taught me and my seven siblings the importance of caring and compassion, being humble, the importance of honesty and integrity, being grateful, having respect for others, the importance of relationships, and being kind. Our upbringing is an important part of the people we become in the way we view the world. We learn many things from our parents, a role model such as a professor, and from our friends. Growing up, I was taught to put myself in the other person's shoes to be aware and sensitive of my impact on others. Recognizing it's often not what you say, but how you say it. Integrity is having strong moral principles based on honesty and to follow those principles. As you start your career, always be truthful and honest. You'll never forget what you've said if it's said in truth. No matter how successful, popular, well-liked, or well-connected you become, always remember the importance of honesty and integrity. My parents always emphasize the importance of gratitude. If we are grateful, then we can and will achieve more. Negativity and unhappiness can be infectious and contagious, as can be happiness, positivity, and gratitude. When you are grateful, you attract positive energy all around you. The art of building strong relationships was passed on to me by my parents and my siblings. Our dad served more than 30 years in the military, served his community, and volunteered often. I realized how important it is to make meaningful connections and develop relationships. Both my parents, especially mom, was quite popular amongst friends and family for her warmth and welcoming nature. Their kindness and generosity to others is still apparent to this day. As you start your career, strive to make your own connections, volunteer, join a board, and serve your community. The many relationships my parents had built, whether in their military life, school life, or community connections, were because of their welcoming and warm nature. They were always kind, which they expected of their eight children. The respect and admiration of the friends and family members strengthened the bonds my parents shared with their loved ones. They did not tolerate the use of hurtful language or talking bad of others. I am so thankful to, having, to have grown up in a family that was filled with love, care, and joy. If you did not, seek to develop those attributes in your own life today. I can attest that your kids will forever thank you for it. Finally, Take care of yourself. Stress is part of your career. Don't be afraid to feel and express emotion. Use humor to cope and be willing to laugh with others and laugh at yourself. Develop collegial relationships with other professionals in the organization where you work. Always keep your options open. There are so many possibilities and you will always have choices. 
40 years ago, if someone would have said to me, someday you will be the CEO of your hometown hospital where you were born, I probably would have told them they were crazy. I attribute my nursing career and the growth of our at-home hospital to my parents and the values they taught me. I encourage you to take an inventory of those core values you live each day as you start your career and grow in your profession. 2021 University of Maine at Presque graduates, I congratulate you, I honor you, and I thank you for allowing me to share in this special time as you receive your degrees and begin your career. I look forward to working with you, serving on a board with you, or calling on you for advice. I commend you on choosing the University of Maine at Presque Isle to jumpstart your career. I am grateful for the education this fine institution provided me. I promise you, the journey will be rewarding. Godspeed. We now host a very special commencement tradition, the presentation of honorary doctor of humane letters degrees to some very special individuals. This year's commencement speaker, Chris Duty and Larry M. Shaw, president and CEO of MMG Insurance, who delivered last year's commencement address. As part of both of these honorary degree presentations, I have a pronouncement to read, and then we'll conduct a ceremonial hooding. First, we'll present Chris Duty with her honorary degree. As I introduced her just a few moments ago, I will just say that Chris Duty is a remarkable leader and a role model, and we're so pleased to present this honor to her today. The pronouncement reads as follows. Chris Duty, champion for healthcare quality and proponent of community service. You are commended today for your service to the people of Arusta County and to those in need of quality health care throughout the state and nation. As a dedicated public servant, you have spent more than three decades advocating for health care access and affordability at the local, state, and national level. You have combined exceptional leadership skills with your abiding compassion for patients as you've helmed an institution you've been a part of since you were 15 years old. Your efforts with community organizations from the Aroostook Partnership for Progress to the United Way of Aroostook County have helped to move the region forward. At the state and national level, your work with organizations include the Maine Hospital Association, Maine Community College System, and American Hospital Association has helped to shape policy, increase access, and impact communities. As a Caribou native and 1983 graduate of the University of Maine at Presque Isle, you have served as an ambassador for Northern Maine and an inspiration for young people working to achieve their goals and dreams. Your work has made an important impact upon the people of Arusta County, the state of Maine, and far beyond. In appreciation of your outstanding service and in recognition of your status as a dedicated public servant, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters Honoris Causa. Thank you, President Rice and Chancellor Malloy. I am truly honored and humbled to accept this honorary doctoral degree from the University of Maine at Presque Isle. Also, I am so excited to be receiving this honorary degree with my friend and colleague, Larry Shaw. As a 1983 graduate of the University of Maine at Presque Isle and a lifelong citizen of Aroostook -Aroostook County, I have seen firsthand the growth and development of this incredible academic institution and the significant contributions that your graduates of the past have made to our community, our region, our state, and beyond. I can attest that the University of Maine at Presque Isle has been the training ground for thousands of capable, committed, and compassionate individuals, many of whom went on to pursue their careers at our hospital and other organizations throughout the state. I am honored to share today's commencement with all of you and your families. I too am sharing this special moment with my wonderful family. I truly appreciate the University of Maine at Presque Isle for conferring this honorary doctoral degree upon me and will forever wear it with pride and allow it to serve as a testament to the education that I received here and the successes of my career. Thank you. Now to present Larry Shaw with his honorary degree. As a longtime leader, 
Larry Shaw has worked to strengthen positive and mutually beneficial relationships between higher education and the business sector, and he has been a great benefactor to Aroostook County culturally as well as economically. Their pronouncement reads as follows. Larry M. Shaw, advocate for workforce development and champion of higher education, you are commended today for your service to the people of Aroostook County and your commitment to strengthening collaborations between higher education and business. As a dedicated public servant, you have worked at the local, state, and national level to foster synergy within the, indi within the insurance industry, across business sectors, and in connection with community partners. You have shown an incredible commitment to impacting the region's economy and growing workforce development opportunities. You have demonstrated your dedication to service, progress, and community betterment through your work in Northern Maine with the Mark and Emily Turner Foundation Scholarship Committee and the University of Maine at Presque Isle's Foundation Board and its Board of Visitors, and at the state and national level with the Maine Development Foundation, the Governor's Financial Services Economic Development Group, and the National Association of Mutual Insurance Companies. Your passion for and support of this university has been unwavering and has provided students and community members with exceptional educational opportunities. Your work has made an important impact upon the people of Aroostook County, the state of Maine, and beyond. In appreciation of your outstanding service and in recognition of your status as a dedicated public servant, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters honoris causa. President Rice, trustees, faculty, and all the individuals that make up the University of Maine at Presque Isle, I am honored and humbled by this recognition. Thank you. Congratulations to Chris Duty, a true asset of our region. I know any time I am on a list with her, it's a good thing. Today is about you, the graduates, family, and friends. Congratulations, a meaningful achievement due to the time and effort needed to make this happen. As a graduate, you have gotten yourself an education that readies you for the real world. How do I know this? At MMG, 25% of our employees have a degree from UMPI. 70% have taken a course, certificate program, or had other academic involvement here at the school. We know firsthand that graduates are ready to build their careers and take on the challenges that lie ahead. A few thank yous. All the great people at MMG, I am very fortunate to work with such a talented team. My mom and dad, who continue to live by the motto, life is what you make it. And last, but certainly not least, my wife, who has two degrees from Umpty, by the way, which makes her smarter than me. She has been a strong and staple partner throughout my career. Today doesn't happen without her by my side. Once again, thank you to the university. Congratulations to the graduates. Reflect on your accomplishments. Celebrate and then get out there and make your life happen. It is now that time you have been waiting for the presentation of the candidates for degrees. So graduates, it's our tradition to give each of the members of the graduating class a wings lapel pin as part of this presentation. You've earned your wings and we look forward to seeing where they take you. Please know that you will be receiving your wings in the mail in the coming weeks. With that, let us begin. Bachelor of Arts in Accounting. Chase Alexander Mooney. Victoria K. Machado, summa cum laude. Kirsty Megan Stewart, magna cum laude. Nicole M. Stewart, cum laude. Bachelor of Arts in Biology. 
Sarah Ann Bouchard. Anais Diaz. Sarah Renee Dunkley. Christian Blake Lunn. Inez Isuji Nagoga. Michaela Joy Schwartz. Kendra G. Silvers, summa cum laude. Madison Kaylin Thwet. Bachelor of Arts in Business Administration. Emma Catherine Bellier, magna cum laude. Erica Bennett, cum laude. Haley Joy Bergen, cum laude. Lisa Bianca Sennett. Zachary Lee Crouch. Danielle L. Dowdy. Leah E. H. Boyce. St. Nicholas James Burris. Cassandra Ellen Butler. Patrick Thomas Cash, magna cum laude. Aaron E. Shalou. Ryan J. Cote, magna cum laude, U.S. Air Force veteran, Maine Air National Guard, active duty. Kelly Marie Davis. Megan Alyssa Davis, cum laude. Jennifer B. DeShane. Rebecca Lynn Dellenbeck. Emily Joy Dyer, magna cum laude. Justin Michael Dyer, cum laude. Heather L. Fletcher. Jacob Travis Fluelling, summa cum laude. Michelle V. Fournier, magna cum laude. Abigail Don Gonier. Joanna L. Gervais. Sarah Grace Gilman, summa cum laude. Sarah Shea Reed Gorno. George Thomas Harris. Samantha Marie Hart. Justin Michael Hodgkin, U.S. Marines, active duty. Jennifer Marie Howe, cum laude. Phoenix Jordan Jr. Deborah McCallum Klain, summa cum laude. Raina Marie Kolbacker, summa cum laude. Sarah Nicole Landry. Adriana Emma Levesque. 
cum laude. Michael J. Lewin, magna cum laude. Heather Ann Massey, magna cum laude. Grace Nicole McCrum, magna cum laude. Ashley Elaine Morton, cum laude. Nikki A. Muse, magna cum laude. Christian Robert Mumley. Zufeng Ning. Manish Pandi, summa cum laude. Mark Thomas Feneff, magna cum laude. Amanda Lee Pooler, summa cum laude. Catherine Putnam. Ronnie Joe Shaw. Haley L. Shea. Timothy Zachariah Spiropolis. Michael Patrick Sullivan. Marissa Gabrielle Valdivia Regal, cum laude. Delany Ray Teresa Strout. Emily Alden Ward. Brooke Ann Wilcox. Sabrina J. Witham, cum laude. Nicole Irene Woodhouse, magna cum laude. Bachelor of Arts in Criminal Justice. Forrest Qua Bates, magna cum laude. Hannah Rachel Brewer, Drug Policy and Intervention Certificate. Renee Alice Browning, cum laude. Heidi E. Dockery, cum laude. Chandler Wayne Garrison, magna cum laude. Lauren Joy Gibson, cum laude. Harvey Harold Higgins. Stephanie Lee Klinger. James Polites, cum laude, U.S. Marine and U.S. Army veteran. Zachary Kyle Quint. Tiffany Joanne Stewart, Cum laude. Sora Tajima. Caleb R. Thompson. Jacob Nason Worthley, Magna Cum Laude. Bachelor of Arts in English. Megan Alaska Cole, cum laude. Justin Lawrence Willette, magna cum laude. Nathan Eli Richardson, summa cum laude. Melanie Allison Terry, cum laude. Bachelor of Arts in History and Political Science. 
Antonio Montrell Blue Gamble, U.S. Army Veteran. Ricardo A. Cohen, U.S. Marine Corps Veteran. Joel Anthony Gorton, Summa Cum Laude. Gabriel Logan Honeywell, Magna Cum Laude. Johanna Laba, Summa Cum Laude. Christopher William Perry, Summa Cum Laude. Rogue Valentin Reeves, Summa Cum Laude. Angela Margarita Wilkinson, Summa Cum Laude. Bachelor of Arts in Psychology. Stephanie Jo Bragg. Vanessa Dana Charette. Sierra Hope Darby, Magna Cum Laude. Aubrey Maria Dowdy. Kimberly Ann McGuire, Summa Cum Laude. Danielle Ann Mango. Caitlin Mary Miles, Summa Cum Laude. Cassandra L. Nightingale, Cum Laude. Lacey Jean Tower. Jennifer I. Winslow, Cum Laude. Bachelor of Applied Science. Ashley Ann Coldren. Tammy Annette Sear. Bachelor of Fine Arts. Joshua Dogan Samuel Burden. Bachelor of Liberal Studies. Levi Gregory Armandi, magna cum laude. Lisa Kennedy Bean, cum laude. Julia Shauna Bollier. Ashley Nicole Blake. Shalane Lynn Crandall. Chris T. Dion, cum laude. Patrick O. Fahey. Julio Garcia Rengifo. Christian Rudolph Jans van Furen, cum laude. Cheyenne Tapinga Anna Maria Judkins, cum laude. Aaron Kyle Lukes. Joshua J. McAtee. Nancy Marie McDowell, cum laude. Felix Moranta Reyes, magna cum laude. Shira A. Murphy, summa cum laude. Lauren C. Willette. April L. Saracen, Magna Cum Laude. Amy Sue Wasson Sawyer.
Andrea Lynn Willard. Bachelor of Science, Elementary Education. Michaela Marie Butler. Megan Emily Cole, magna cum laude. Margaret Marion Dickinson, magna cum laude. Madison Ruth Exford. Kayla Ray Grant, magna cum laude. Abigail Ashley Lavoie, magna cum laude. Mackenzie Lexi Lee, magna cum laude. Leticia Lynn Lenentine. Tasha Leah Martin. Caitlin Angela McCarthy, magna cum laude. Jocelyn Elaine McLaughlin, magna cum laude. Jessica Jean Jimmo. Amy Marie Seely, magna cum laude. Alexandra Mead Smy, summa cum laude. Bachelor of Science, Environmental Science and Sustainability. Eric Daniel Bagley, summa cum laude. Matthew D. Dyer. Matthew J. Payan. Bachelor of Science, Exercise Science. Grant Ward Bridges, Cum Laude. Jordan Nicholas Hanscom, Cum Laude. Trevor Hartley Levesque. Cullen Hawk Morella. Andre Leo Rossignol, cum laude. William Christopher Stinson. Ashlyn Lauren Straub. Casey Ann Tardiff. Bachelor of Science in Mathematics. Zhang Mao. Hao Yu Wang, magna cum laude. Dunning Ye, magna cum laude. Bachelor of Science in Physical Education, Teaching and Non-Teaching. Roberto De La Pena. Paul David Kaplan, Magna Cum Laude. Bachelor of Science in Secondary Education. Alexandria Lorraine Brace, magna cum laude. Daniel Philip Warren, magna cum laude. Bachelor of Social Work. Miranda Corbin, magna cum laude. Raul E. Lorenzoni, magna cum laude. Hilary M. Morton, cum laude. 
Jessica Michelle O'Donnell. Marissa Purley, cum laude. Christina Marie Shaw. Associate of Arts, Applied Art. Adam Joseph Bishop, cum laude. Associate of Arts, Criminal Justice. Charlotte Evelyn Carrier, cum laude. Samantha May Courier. Delany Ray Teresa Strout. Isaac Stephen Whipperman, cum laude. Associate of Arts, Liberal Studies. Madison Grace McCarthy, cum laude. Emily Blake Page. Susan J. York, cum laude. Associate of Science, Medical Laboratory Technology. Wesley Allen Heinrichs. Laura Ann Knight. Alin B. Ladner, cum laude. Silbera V. McCausland, cum laude. Ryan William Tebow, cum laude. Elizabeth Ann Ward. Adriana Marie Willie, Maine Army National Guard, active duty. Associate of Science, Physical Therapist Assistant. Zachary T. Amnot. Francesca Melissa Kutor, cum laude. Serena Joanne Fitzpatrick, cum laude. Ashley May Harris, cum laude. Benjamin John Lowry, magna cum laude. Kayla Michelle Martinez. Jonathan Daryl Willett, summa cum laude. By the virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the University of Maine System and confirming the action of our faculty, I hereby grant unto you the appropriate degree of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Applied Science, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Liberal Studies, Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Social Work, Associate of the Arts, and Associate of Science together with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto. Traditionally, at this time, graduating seniors would move their tassels from the right side of their caps to the left, signifying they are now college graduates. If you have your cap and tassel as you're joining us virtually, please do that now. And congratulations to each and every one of you, the newest graduates at the University of Maine. This time, I am pleased to introduce your 2021 student commencement speaker, Deborah McCallum-Klain, 
Remarks will be followed by greetings from Alumni Board President Craig Cormier. Faculty, staff, fellow students, families, and friends. Ambitious people generally have a plan for themselves. They set a goal that they desire to achieve, create a plan for reaching said goal, and proceed to follow that plan through to a successful end. Sometimes though, not from lack of hard work, solid organization and follow through, things will go sideways. Why? Is it from a miscalculation? Is it fate? Is it a higher power at work? Whatever the driving force, there is a different plan in place and you have no alternative but to follow it. I saw my life go sideways in September 1990 when my eldest son suffered birth trauma, which resulted in lifelong physical disabilities and chronic health issues. Four months earlier, I had earned my associate's degree and had a plan in place. Baby would go to daycare when I returned to work and I would go I would begin work on my bachelor's degree at night the following January. Instead, I found myself leading my son's home health nursing care team, maintaining feeding and breathing tubes, treating frequent infections, enduring significant medical crises, and advocating for my son for the next 30 plus years, all while raising his non-disabled younger brother. As a result, the joyful moments and personal growth I've experienced are profound and precious. However, my desire to earn that bachelor's degree had never left me. It was always there, tucked away someplace inside of me, brought out from time to time, wistfully reviewed, but never let go of. Fast forward to early 2018. The job I loved at Julia's Auction House cataloging Civil War memorabilia was ending due to business closure. My youngest was graduating from college. My eldest was at home with just me and his nurses. What next? I read a news article regarding Umpy's Your Page program and was intrigued by it. I could take courses towards a bachelor's degree as well as earn credit for life, work, and experiences all from home. It was the perfect opportunity for a non-traditional student like myself who had unique family responsibilities. Returning to college late in life, all via computer and not in a classroom, took some getting used to. But I'd made up my mind that if I was going to do this, I was going to make the most of this opportunity and give it everything I had, while working a full-time job and providing the one-on-one -on -one care for my son at the same time. The coursework was challenging, both intellectually and technically, but I had some truly wonderful professors who guided, supported, and encouraged me. It felt wonderful to be learning again, to be pushing myself to my limit and finding that I could dig deeper still, if necessary, to craft and produce that quality final paper or project. The, de the degree program I chose was a BA in Business Administration with a concentration in Leadership Management, a perfect fit for me, allowing me to combine the study and application of business principles with my love of history. One leader of personal interest is Maine's own Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain, a renowned scholar, orator, military and government leader. An ambitious man, Chamberlain left a prestigious position at Bowdoin College to enlist in the Union Army, strongly believing that it was his duty to fight for the Union. Successful leadership on the battlefield led Chamberlain to earn respect and repeat promotions all the way up to Brigadier General. Wounded a total of six times in battles throughout the war, the grave wounding Chamberlain sustained at age 36 during the Battle of Petersburg in 1864 affected his health and vitality for the rest of his life, sending his life plan sideways. Chamberlain didn't let his old wounding hold him back from governing the state of Maine for four consecutive years, acting as president of Bowdoin College for 12 years, traveling around the world giving speeches, writing articles and penning the passing of the armies, his historical account of the surrender at Appomattox Courthouse in 1865. He made the most of his life despite his losses. I encourage you to always give that 110%. Seek joy, practice kindness, and find the positives. Life truly is what you make it. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Craig Cormier, a member of the class of 06 and second generation OWL. I'm honored to join you today as we celebrate the achievements of the UMPI class of 2021. As president of the UMPI Alumni Association, it is my privilege to hereby confer on each graduate assembled here today lifetime membership in the University of Maine at Presque Isle 
Alumni Association. On behalf of the Alumni Association Board of Directors and nearly 8,900 of your now fellow alums around the world, I offer you congratulations and welcome you to our extended family. You join a long line of alumni beginning in 1905 when 12 students earned their teaching degrees from the Aroostook State Normal School in a ceremony I imagine looked much different than today. You have faced challenges unique amongst your alumni peers, and we commend you for your efforts to keep our campus and its community safe during circumstances this institution hasn't seen since the influenza epidemic swept through Presque Isle over 100 years ago in 1918, emptying dorms, suspending classes, and seeing parts of the campus used as an emergency hospital. In a school year with examples of student bodies who were unable to rise to the challenge, you, your peers, and the faculty and staff of this institution took your responsibilities seriously, worked hard, and made us all very, very proud. Each of us has our umpy story filled with memories, and we hope you will treasure yours. You have established relationships that will follow you throughout your life. Yes, you will stay connected with your fellow owls, but I encourage you to stay in touch with the faculty and staff who have had an impact on you during your time here. Their belief in you doesn't stop today, and they will be invaluable resources, mentors, and friends as you navigate the years ahead. Likewise, as members of the association, we invite you to stay in touch with us so you can remain connected with campus, take advantage of our network of alumni, and participate in and support important work happening here at UMPI. Visit umpi.edu slash alumni to learn more about the association how you can be involved, the benefits that come with membership, and let us know how we can stay in contact. Congratulations on your achievement. You have much to be proud of. With that, I yield the podium to President Rice. Thank you. And now comes that moment during commencement that graduates always look forward to, the tossing of the caps. Because we cannot gather together in Wadeen Gymnasium for our commencement, we promise you a distance-friendly tossing. So we'd ask all members of the class of 2021 to please stand as we mark this momentous occasion with a very special tribute. You're a rare breed, Umpy Owls. Fierce, determined, no matter what challenges arise. And you've seen challenges like no owls before you, but you've faced them head on, never letting them stop you, always keeping your end goal in sight. No, it hasn't been easy. It's taken grit, resourcefulness, patience, and probably more than a few sleepless nights. But getting here, striving for altitude, scanning this new horizon before you, it's all been worth it. And we couldn't be more proud. You've grown wise beyond your years. You're strong, fearless, ready. And while watching you leave this nest isn't easy, we know this is it. This is your moment. We can't wait to see where your wings take you. And now for the official cap toss. We'll count down from three. Three, two, one, toss. Graduates, it's time to bring our ceremony to a close. But before we go, we want to remind you that your faculty, staff, and alumni association will be hosting virtual gatherings via Zoom video. Our way to gather with you in small groups, share the excitement of this experience, and celebrate your accomplishments in person and live. You may already have received a Zoom link, but you can find a full list of these Zoom gatherings by simply logging on to my.umpy.edu the list is on the main page. Thank you for gathering with us today on this most special of all days, the 112th commencement of the University of Maine at Presque Isle. Your dedication and your perseverance, especially since life changed last March, assures us that you will accomplish incredible things. Soar on, Umpy Owls.
I hear the lifting of our wings Take to the sky as sons and daughters Our voices echoing Like owls flying above the fields Be heard, be heard Above her crystal waters We are the sons and daughters of You may rise up Prescott From this nest of steel and stone Take to the sky, you sons and daughters Hold the memory of home Owls flying above the fields Be heard, be heard Above her crystal waters We are the sons and daughters of You may rise up Prescott Raise a glass, together sing Take to the sky, you sons and daughters A choir of queens and kings Owls rising above the fields Be heard, be heard Above her crystal waters We are the sons and daughters of You may rise up the sky we are the sons and daughters of the main rise up Prescott.